Um, so today I'm going to talk about how to customize WooCommerce the right way using WordPress actions and filters. Um, if you're not familiar with WordPress action and filter hooks, we're going to break them down piece by piece with examples, uh, as well as provide some resources for you to dive in further. Uh, and if you have worked with WordPress action and filter hooks before, we'll show you some specific tricks with WooCommerce and hopefully there's some new information here for you too. Um, I'll also go over the best way to organize your WooCommerce customizations depending on your theme. And finally, we'll have a little freestyle WooCommerce customization live coding session uh, to see some things happen in real time. Um, so this talk assumes that you're at least familiar with PHP, WordPress, web development, and GitHub. Um, so, but even if you're not, I think you should be able to follow along. Um, and so, um, you know, I would say still watch if even if any of those things doesn't make any sense to you right now. And hopefully just the concepts will make some sense. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, I, my name is Joshua Michaels. I'm a developer, designer, DJ, and music producer based in Chicago. Uh, I've been involved in, web, in the web in some way, shape, or form since 1992. Um, and I've been a WordPress developer for over 12 years. Um, and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Monica and Andy, which is an organic baby and kids clothing company based in Chicago. And with my current job, I'm currently working in Shopify, but uh, previous to this, I ran a design and development agency and I had many clients, large and small, that used uh, WordPress and WooCommerce for their e-commerce stores. So through trial and error and lots of failures, um, I hope to help you customize your client's WooCommerce sites the right way while hopefully avoiding some of the pitfalls and pain points that I ran into along the way. So with that, uh, let's dive right in. So let's explore a WooCommerce development scenario. You've acquired a new e-commerce client after weeks of hard fought negotiations and you're finally ready to start the job. So you outline some basic steps to complete the project. Um, so first, on your local setup, you set up Woo WordPress and WooCommerce. Then you add the client's products to the store. Then you customize your shop layout. And then of course, profit. But let's back up a little bit. What about this step three? How do I do that? Uh, well, what do the docs say to do? So if you look at the WooCommerce docs, what they tell you to do is copy the files from WooCommerce plugin, which are found here in WooCommerce slash templates, um, and then create a directory in your theme called WooCommerce and copy everything in there. Um, and if you've worked on a WooCommerce site before, you've probably used this method. And I just want to say it's a bad idea. Um, and I'm gonna call this the copy templates method. And this is a very poor life decision. Um, so I'm just gonna say, don't do it. But you may ask why though. Um, and there's a few re reasons for this. So the first one is WooCommerce updates can make your copy templates obsolete. Um, and I'm just gonna show you um, the warning that they kind of give you. Uh, and I will increase the screen size here so we can see this. So if you ever looked at the WooCommerce uh, plugin code, and that's where we are here on GitHub, um, and this is just one of the templates. So what they do tell you to do is copy basically everything in this templates directory. So that's all these files, subfiles, et cetera, um, into a folder in your theme called WooCommerce. Um, so we're just going to look at the single product.php template really quick, just as an example, and they always provide this warning. So it says, this template can be overridden by copying it into your theme slash WooCommerce. Um, however, on occasion, WooCommerce will need to update the template files, and you, the theme developer, will need to copy the new files to your theme to maintain compatibility. What they don't tell you there is any, if you've made any customizations to those themes, those will obviously get overridden or you have to copy those back to all the new files. And 
they say we try to do this as little as possible, but it does happen. And in my experience, it happens maybe two to three times a year. And so if you're copying all of these files and you've made customizations, say even just for a single product, all these little template parts, you have your own little um, custom code and all those, you have to copy the, all that back over. So um, that obviously is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so, um, and with that, that's really hard to maintain. So, um, the other thing is these customizations are tied to your theme. And now there's, uh, there's kind of two sides to that argument, whether you should have the customizations in your theme or say in a plugin. And I'm kind of of the plugin school. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with today, but we'll show you some caveats with that as well, um, a little later. Um, but if you have it in a plugin um, and you wanted to use the new theme, you don't have to copy all these files over. So that's um, so that's another reason. So I'm going to say just just don't do it. <laughs> don't use the copy templates method. And there is a better way. Um, it doesn't involve tacos, but one can dream. So what is that way? That is, of course, using action and filter hooks. So what are action and filter hooks? Well, most broadly, um, hooks allow your code to interact with other code in predefined locations provided by WordPress core, a theme, or a plugin. Um, so there's two kinds of hooks, action and filter hooks. So action hooks add data or behavior. Uh, filter hooks change or manipulate existing data. So today we're mostly gonna focus on action hooks because that's kind of what's provided for us uh, through Woo WooCommerce, but we'll also look at an example of a filter hook as well. Um, let's look at some hooks in more detail. Um, so the first example is the same file we were looking at before, which is a single dash product.php file right in the WooCommerce code. So let's just take a look at that again. And it's actually just under that part that I just read you. Um, and just more broadly, if you've ever looked at these kind of theme templates in WooCommerce, they look almost exactly like a regular page template in, Woo, in uh, WordPress. So you have your normal get header call here. Um, you can see here there's stuff happening before this loop. This is just the loop which spits out the products. You have some stuff happening after. Um, it's calling the sidebar and then the get footer. So if you you know, worked with theme development at all. Um, it looks pretty similar to a normal WordPress page. Um, the only difference here is they're spitting out products instead of posts or uh, the page content. Um, so this is actually the first hook we're gonna look at here and I'll um, make this a little bigger. Um, and um, so let's just take a look at this uh, in a slide so we can kind of break it down a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, so here's a little code snippet, and whenever I show you these, the, the text on top is going to be uh, where you'd find that file. So um, that's in the WooCommerce plugin under templates under single-product.php. And then below, I'll put the name of the hook if we're referencing a hook. So um, this is the exact same code we were just looking at on the WooCommerce GitHub. Um, so... Um, and here's a tip, looking through the plugin code is a great way to find available actions that you can quote unquote hook into. Um, and another tip is that um, actions are just functions that call other functions. So in this context, a hook is really just a function. So when you hear or see hook, just think of a function. Um, so just breaking down this down a little bit more, um, WooCommerce in that template is calling this do action, which is the action. Um, and then our hook here is WooCommerce before main content. Um, and that's a function that outputs any code before the main content of the page. And hopefully these are named in the way that kind of tells you what they're doing. Um, so there's also this number here, um, which is a priority. And we're going to look at that in more detail in, in just a sec. So um, let's just look at these comments because um, that'll tell us a little more about what's going on here. So um, 
at the top here, it's just saying what the hook is. That's the hook, WooCommerce before main content. Now these at hooks references are just telling you what other hooks or functions are getting called when this hook is called. So we can see here that there's two. So the first one is WooCommerce output content wrapper. Um, and that outputs, this says opening divs. Um, I'm gonna go back here. Let me just go back because I hit the button. Um, so um, it says output content wrapper and then it has the priority which is 10 um, and that outputs opening divs for the content. And then below that we have another hook function which is WooCommerce breadcrumb and that has a priority of 20. Um, so uh, let's go here, where are we going next? Okay, so let's look at a super basic example and we're gonna add our own wrapper div to a product page. Um, and here's how we're gonna do that using the WooCommerce before main content hook. Uh, let's see, here we go. Let's let this roll again. And here we go. Um, so we have, we're using that hook here, which is WooCommerce before main content. And uh, we're gonna add an opening div. So in our case, we're gonna add an action that hooks into this WooCommerce before main content hook. Um, and since that was a hook that already existed, we're adding an action to it. And that's another way of saying we're hooking into this action. Um, so we're adding an action, that's the action. This is the hook, which is WooCommerce before main content. And then the second argument to add action is a callback function. Um, and that's a function that either already exists or it's a function that we provide and we're telling what the behavior is gonna be um, when we hook into this hook. Um, and then the th last number is a priority. And if you remember before, the other two functions that were hooked into this hook were um, had a priority of 10 and 20 respectively. And we want our div to go before those. So we're putting in a priority of five. Now we could put at any number before 10, but the best practice is to leave a little space between your priority and the other actions that are happening. So um, like we could put it at nine, but then we couldn't put anything after um, our function um, or we could put it at one, but then we couldn't put it at anything before it. So we're gonna choose five. Um, now, this is our function. And of course it has to have the same name as the second argument to our add action call. Um, so let's, dive in a little more detail to our function that we're going to call. So our function is WooCamp open div. And first we're running a conditional just to make sure that we're on a single product page using the is product uh, function that's provided by WordPress and the bang operator just saying if we're not on a single product page, get out of here. And then we're just echoing out a opening div with a class of WooCamp wrap. Um, so then of course, we need a closing div. So this is the function that we're gonna use to do that. Um, and in this time, instead of hooking into the WooCommerce before main content, we're gonna hook into WooCommerce after main content. Um, and then again, the second argument is our function, um, which you see here. And then we're gonna do a priority of 50 um, and we're just doing that so we make sure that this is the last thing happening. So we want our div to like kind of wrap everything up. Um, so again, we're calling a conditional here just to making sure we're on a single product page. And then we're echoing out a div. So instead of showing you this code, let's just look at this as an example on a site. Um, so I have, uh, let's see. I can minimize that here. I have a store here. So um, this is just a basic WooCommerce store. And these are like the sample products that you get with any WordPress and WooCommerce install. Um, and 
let's look at the code I have. So um, I'm using a plugin here. Let me hide these meeting controls. Um, and I will zoom in on this so we can see it a little better. So these are the exact same code snippets that we were showing you in the slides. We're adding an action uh, to um, add our opening div here. And then we're adding an action uh, hooking into WooCommerce after main content to show our closing div here. Um, so that's great. Let's look at a single product. Um, if we can get, there we go. So it hasn't done anything yet, but we just wanna make sure that our div is there. So let's just take a look here. Um, and I, so here is our div that we've added. It's the WooCamp wrap div. And you can see this is grabbing all of the product code, HTML that's displaying the product um, and wrapping it in our own div. So let's do something with that. So something easy, we can just add our own styles now to that. So I have some here, we're just gonna add a little padding, a very light gray background. And I'm just disabling this float here. Um, so I'm gonna save that and this should actually refresh itself automatically. Um, so there we go. So we have this gray background on the whole uh, product page. Um, so but I wanna make the product stand out a little bit. So I'm gonna add some other styling here. We're gonna put a little more padding and then a white background around the product. And just for fun, let's make the product title itself really big and really thick with a font weight of 800. So let me save that. Yes, I do wanna save. Um, and so there we go. So you can say, well, you just added a div, like so what? But there's a lot you can do with that um, by just wrapping the whole uh, content in your own div and then you can add your own styles um, and yes, you could potentially target the, the CSS um, that's already there or the selectors that are already there and add your own styles, but this keeps everything nice and tidy. And then let me just show you an example of where you can kind of um, get into some finer tuned uh, examples of this. So instead of doing a negative, let me do um, this conditional, which is just going to add... Um, add this to a certain category. Um, so a has term is the way you do this in WooCommerce. Um, and I know 18 is the ID for our hoodie products. So I'm gonna add this there. And let me just copy this over down here to our wrapping div. Um, and make this a positive conditional. So if it has, is a product, single product, and has our hoodies category, then let's make those changes that we have. So when this should refresh, we should, it should go back to the way it was. And that's how it is working. So let's look at one of our hoodies here. And now we do have those changes. So even just with that, you can get into some really kind of sophisticated stuff. Um, with just a few lines of code and some conditionals. So um, let me actually get back to where we were before with that. And uh, let's see, let's save that. Um, so next, let's go back to our shop page or actually let's go back to this one. Okay, that's back to where we were before. So let's say um, now we've added something and we wanna remove something. So just a quick example, I'm gonna remove these breadcrumbs. And we saw before those were hooked into the WooCommerce before main content hook. Um, so we're gonna remove those. Um, so again, we're using the remove action. This is our hook, which is WooCommerce before main content. And we're calling the function that we're removing. And we saw before that as a priority of 20. And this fourth argument is actually the number of arguments that we're passing to the function. Since we're removing, we're passing zero. 
So let's just save that and see what happens. So the breadcrumbs are removed. Great. Let's just say we want to add them back in, but at the bottom of the page. So again, we're going to use our WooCommerce after main content hook. Um, we're going to call the function we want to add back in. And we're going to set a priority of five. So it comes kind of before their wrapping divs. Um, so let's see if that works. I don't know if this already refreshed. Yes, it did. So we see our breadcrumbs down here. Now, even without knowing like the priority of other things that may be hooked into this WooCommerce after main content, you could just try some other priorities and see what happens. Um, so now this is moved here, um, down here. So if we look at just the structure, here's our WooCamp wrap div, um, and we can kind of see where these breadcrumbs are now. They're outside of this primary content area. So that's why they're sticking out. Um, now, if I go back and put this, say, back to save one, and this should, so now this is already refreshed and they're within this div now. So just by changing that priority around, you can kind of move things. Um, so, okay, let's put those breadcrumbs back to where we had them um, back to normal. And there they are. So I'm gonna go back to our shop page. Okay, great. So just there, we all we did was add a wrapping, our own wrapping div to a single product page. We're able to make some um, pretty cool customizations. And then we're, we're also able to remove and move items just via actions. Um, and by changing priority, we're able to move things to different locations on the page. Uh, so next, where do you find all these hooks and what, what, are, what is available for you to hook into? Um, so the first is actually just a list of all these hooks from the WooCommerce GitHub code itself. And we'll just take a look at that really quickly. Um, here we go. Let me shrink this down a little bit. Um, so this is just a list of all the WooCommerce template hooks and they go kind of in the order that they are on the page. Um, starting with some filters for the body class. Um, then you can see the ones we were just working with, which is the WooCommerce before main content. Um, again, here is the breadcrumbs and this lists all the priorities out. Um, and there's lots. Um, so that's one great location. And then uh, another thing I suggest searching for WooCommerce Visual Hook Guide. And I found these, uh, these visual guides on Business Bloomer, um, which, is not, which would not be the first place I would necessarily look for WooCommerce tips and tricks, but they're actually really nice. So um, they have a whole visual hook series. Um, and they have them for checkout page, archive, shop pages, or single product page. So let's just take a look quickly at one for uh, archive page. Um, and this, what it does is list these out visually so you can see exactly where these are fired on each of these WooCommerce theme templates. Um, and here again is our WooCommerce before main content. Um, and also it's, and you, and there's lots of them there's for title, et cetera, after main content. And at the bottom, they list them all again in order uh, with their priorities. Um, similarly, for a single product page, um, you have WooCommerce before single product, et cetera. Um, and there's actually down here, they list the one we were just working with, which, which, which is WooCommerce before main content and the breadcrumb. However, um, that's not in the guide, visual guide up here. So, um, you know, I think with a combination of this list here and these visual guides, you can kind of put together uh, a kind of map of all the hooks that are being run on, an, on a page. And those are all available for you to hook into. Okay, um, next, 
let's just dive a little bit deeper into the code reference for add action, um, just so we kind of understand what's going on there. So um, this is from the WordPress developer docs um, under reference and functions. And um, so add action takes four arguments. The first argument is tag, which is a string, and that's required. That's the name of the action to which the function to add, which is the next argument, is hooked. Um, the function to add is a callable function. That's also required. That's the name of the function that you wish, wish to be called. Uh, so uh, third is the priority, which is the integer. That's optional, specifies the order in which the functions are executed. Um, you can see here it has a default of 10. So if you leave that out, it will just default to priority of 10. Uh, the last argument is an integer and that's accepted arguments. And that's the number of arguments that your function um, or the function that is in function to add accepts and the default is one. Uh, likewise, we have remove action. Uh, and that takes three arguments. Again, we have our tag, which is a string that's required. Uh, the function to remove is the next argument and that is the name of the function to be removed. Um, and third is the priority, which is optional. Again, the default is 10. Now, there is a caveat with remove action. And this is very important to point out. Um, when you're removing a function through remove action, uh, the, both the second and the third arguments, so the function to remove and the priority must match. Um, so if you try, if either of those are incorrect and you don't match the correct priority or you spell the function wrong, it will just fail without any warning. So that's the first thing to check if you're trying to remove something and it doesn't work, make sure you've listed the function correctly and that the priority that you're using is the actual priority that um, is listed in the in the hook. So um, using those resources, you can check the priority to find that out. Um, so with that, let's go into a little bit of how to organize these customizations. Um, so as I just touched on briefly before, if you're not using the storefront theme, uh, you wanna use the WooCommerce theme customizations plugin. Um, and that's a plugin that WooCommerce has created just for this purpose. Um, and you can find that on GitHub. So let's just take a quick look. Um, here it is here. Um, you just download and install this like any other plugin. Uh, it just has a main plugin file, which basically enqueues all the other files in this custom directory. And these are just blank templates. Um, so the functions PHP is where you'd add your um, your customizations, which is what I'm using. And then you can add your style. The only difference here is I'm using SCSS or SAS and compiling that down to a style.css file. Um, and we're not doing any custom JavaScript today. So um, that's it. It's a really simple plugin. Um, and I recommend using that and why um, it keeps all of your customizations in one place. As we touched on before, it's independent of the theme. So if you wanted to change your theme in the future, all your customizations are ready to go. Um, you can easily check conflicts, conflicts with a plugin just by disabling your plugin. And most importantly, um, all of your customizations are, won't be affected by updates to WooCommerce or the theme. So um, those are all good reasons to use, uh, use this WooCommerce theme customizations plugin. However, there is a caveat and that is if you're using uh, the storefront theme or a customized WooCommerce theme, um, I do recommend adding your customizations to your child's themes functions PHP and your own style sheet. Um, and the first reason for this is themes like Storefront or a customized WooCommerce theme may have their own hooks. And I'll show you an example of that here. Um, so this is the Storefront theme here. Um, and this is just a file that lists out their hooks and runs them. 
So going back to the hooks that we were looking at, the WooCommerce before main content, you can see here that storefront is removing this just like we did to move it. Um, but then if you go down here, they're adding their own action here. And that action is storefront before content. So if you wanted to do what we did before, which was either remove the breadcrumbs or move them, you'd have to use this hook um, instead of the WooCommerce before main content because they have overridden this hook. So that's what I'm saying about using storefront or another dedicated WooCommerce theme. They may have already overridden these um, actions from the default actions from WooCommerce. So you'd have to search in and find their own hooks. Now, um, the order is important um, and that's because uh, themes and plugins load a different order. So if you have a plugin and you're using one of these themes, your custom adjacents will try to run before these updated actions will, will have existed. So nothing will work. Um, so again, if you're using a storefront theme or a customized WooCommerce theme, I recommend using Functions PHP. Um, now you can get around this using a built-in uh, WordPress function called init, but then you have to run that for each of your customizations and um, it just is more trouble than it's worth. So today um, I'm just showing you using the WooCommerce theme customization plugin, as well as my plate starter theme. And um, just recapping where to get those, um, the WooCommerce theme customization plugin is available on GitHub. And this is where you get my uh, plate starter theme. And at the end of the talk, um, I'm gonna have a single page URL that you can go to to get all this stuff and all the links that I've shown previously. Um, so it'll all be there for you. Um, so now let's customize. We're gonna show you some code um, adding our own actions and filters uh, to customize our shop. So let's jump right into that. So here's our shop again. Um, this is our archive or shop page. So let's see what we can do here. Um, okay, we are going to add some sale text to our shop or product loop page. So I'm gonna hook into this WooCommerce before shop loop hook. And this is my function, my callback function, and I'm gonna run this at a priority of 10. Um, here's my function, WooCommerce add cell text, or WooCamp add cell text, excuse me. And we're just echoing out uh, a wrapping div, our sale text, and then a paragraph. So I'm gonna save that and let's see what happens here. Fingers crossed. So yes, we have our little sale banner here, but um, doesn't look too great. So I've added my class here of sale text, so I can style that now by targeting that. I have some styles here. So quickly, I'm adding some padding, a uh, little border radius, and um, adding some little touches to these H2 and the P element within there. So I'm gonna save that, and there we go. So it looks a little better. Um, Back to our filters and actions. Um, okay, so let's take a look back here. We have this little sale button, but say we wanna put some more text down here that lets people know that this product is on sale or not. Um, so how are we gonna do that? Well, there's a hook that's WooCommerce after shop loop item. And since we're on uh, the shop page or archive page, this should work on as it loops through the products. And our function that we're adding is gonna be called WooCamp add content after loop item, priority of 10. Here's our function here. Um, for this one, we're calling the global product, which is made available by WooCommerce. And then we have a conditional here, um, and once we have this product object, we can just say if it is on sale, which is another function that's provided 
by WooCommerce, which is a great way to do this. Um, so if it is on sale, we're echoing out some text that says on sale now. And if not, um, it says not on sale. And um, what's cool about this is we can just quickly test if this is working correctly because we already have these circles here. So when it refreshes, let's check if this is correct. Well, this is not on sale. This is on sale. This is on sale and so on. So this is working great. Um, perfect. So let's say we want to add some text to a single product title. Um, so in this case, and I wanted to point this out as an example, we're using just a normal uh, hook that's provided by WordPress, not necessarily WooCommerce. So just know that when you're working in WooCommerce, all of the regular WordPress hooks are available to you. Um, and so we're gonna hook into the title. Um, and then we're adding this function, WooCamp single product page title, priority of 10, and we have one argument, which is the title. Um, so here we're doing a conditional checking to see if it's a product, single product, again, in the loop. And then we're adding our own text, which is WooCamp special and a dash onto the existing title and then returning that title. And then if um, these conditions aren't met, just return the normal title as we would already. So let's try that. Uh, we have to go to a single product page. Let's try our album again. So yeah, we do have that here. So that's WooCamp special. Um, let's just look at another product just to make sure it's only not only on one. And yeah, we have that on all the products. So obviously that's a bit kind of heavy handed. Um, but we could add that conditional again here. Let's just check and see if it's in our hoodies category or t-shirts. And that's a lot of parentheses. Um, let's see if this works. So that's what we would expect here because this is not in one of those categories. Um, let's check one of our hoodies. And that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, this term, let's just take this out. Let's turn right these t-shirts. Oh, that's why. I forgot our parentheses here and a comma that should work and then I don't need this one okay there we go so that works um, let's just double check that again and uh, this is our beanie it shouldn't work on there and let's just check a t-shirt that's on the second page great so that's working perfectly cool um, So we've seen how we can update the titles on a single product page. So let's say we wanted to update all of the titles on an archive page. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, to do that, we have to remove the default action. So the action we're gonna remove is WooCommerce shop loop item title, um, which is, well, actually it's this action which is WooCommerce template loop product title, which is hooked into this hook. Um, and we, I've checked that as a priority of 10 and make sure to always check that. Um, so now that we've removed that, we're adding our own custom action and we're using the same hook again. And we're adding our own function, which is WooCamp shop loop title. Uh, let's comment this out really quickly. I'm going to do it to all of them. So what we're doing is just adding some additional text that says new. Um, I'm echoing back out the class that was there before. So the titles display the same. 
Um, and then we're using the normal uh, WordPress get the title function, uh, which works for any post, not just products, but posts, pages, etc. cetera. Um, so let's save that. And then we'll go to our archive page as soon as this refreshes. Um, and we have new. So again, let's just try with our conditional. Um, we're gonna just only add this to our hoodies products. Maybe we just added hoodies to our store. Um, and you can see here, this is only on hoodies and not on the other products. So that's great. Um, so my last example, is um, this is dealing with the actual product query. Um, and this is slightly more advanced because you can actually, using an action hook, you can filter what products are displayed on the page. Um, so here you'll notice there's no priority because this is kind of just its own thing. This is the WooCommerce product query. Um, and that won't necessarily be on those uh, visual guides, but um, this is a kind of cool thing to do that you can hook into. So we're gonna write our own function um, that takes the query as the argument. Um, and what we're gonna do here is grab all the products that are on sale. And again, uh, WooCommerce provides this function for us, which is WooCommerce get product IDs on sale. We're storing those in a variable. And then we're just saying, uh, we're gonna reset the query um, and just check if these product IDs are on sale. And if the, they are, then use that to display all the products. Um, so let's check that out too now. And again, we have these sale markers so we can just see if that's working. And that's working great. And obviously you probably wanna put this on a separate page like um, a sale page, et cetera. Um, but that's, just a sampling of some of the things you can do all the way from just manipulating some text to changing the entire query. Uh, so um, let's recap a little bit. Uh, you wanna use the WooCommerce uh, theme customizations plugin unless you're using the storefront or a WooCommerce dedicated theme. Uh, Use resources to find available hooks. I, I'll provide you some links at the end of this talk. Um, and there's lots of resources out there. So um, third, uh, when removing an action, make sure to add the correct, correct priority as well as the function name or it'll fail silently and you won't have any idea what's going on. So double check those things before you're removing something. Um, now, go forth and customize. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Um, there's so many things you can do with this and, uh, and it's a lot easier than using the copy templates method. Um, so here's all the resources that um, I showed you. They're at, at studio.bio slash WooCamp. Um, I'll leave this up for a few seconds. So everyone can copy that down. And I saw um, a couple people or somebody posted that they couldn't make the talk. Um, so either if someone wants to post this link in the reply on the event page or I'll post this up a little later also. Um, so everything is there, the links and the slides that I just showed you, all the slides. So you can go back through the slides uh, yourself. Um, Thank you very much. That was really fun. Uh, and I hope you guys learned something. So uh, let's see, I should be able to get this back here. I always forget how to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> uh, how do I do that again? There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> Great. That was awesome. Oh, you thank can do you. So, so much. So it's so powerful. You, you made it look very easy. <laughs> it is really easy. That's the right. thing. And I didn't even get that deep into it. So um, that's what I wanted to show, like just with a few simple uh, 
uh, action hooks, you can do a lot of things. So, so hopefully people will take this on and do some stuff on their own. Thank you. You're welcome. We open it up for Q and A. I yeah, have a few, but I want to yield the floor. So, <laughs> I want to ask. <laughs> So yeah, any questions from anybody? I, I guess I, I do have a few questions. Um, sure. If as a as a new person to um, the plugin, I mean, I've installed it and played around with it, but um, do you think that kind of out of the box, it does quite a bit, but like you were saying, the possibilities are endless, but does it require kind of uh, the level to which you've taken it and, and you're, you're knowledgeable about it, or is it pretty functional and, and complete as, as is? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's kind of two ways you can go. You could um, install WooCommerce and just use like uh, the storefront theme or another dedicated WooCommerce theme. And most of those will have um, options available to you in the customizer or um, other ways to kind of configure your store and style it. Um, I think this method is more if you're going the other way, which is uh, I'm gonna kind of make my own customizations through the theme. And, you know, and sometimes store, like the storefront theme is really cool, but you probably inevitably, you're gonna wanna make your own slight manipulations or customizations. So this would be the way to do that. Um, and, you know, I think you could have a sort of a hybrid approach where you still used like a pre-made theme, but you're just adding your own little bit of customizations. And maybe with these, what's great about that is you can find the exact kind of place to hook into and only add it there and not kind of worry about the rest. So you can kind of do some like surgical um, maneuvers getting in there and adjusting something. And that's, to, that's true whether you're kind of adding some styles or uh, manipulating the title, etc. So um, that's what's great about all these. You can just go in and, and uh, kind of uh, hook into the ones you want and leave the rest alone. Got it. Thanks. Uh, someone just asked, can you add a buy now button after add to cart button using hooks? Yes, you could. Um, so that's a little more involved because, you know, the thing with the add to cart or um, buy now button, um, both of those things have different behavior. So, and then you also have to make sure that the product ID is available to you at that point. So those have to be done within, there's like a form that the add to cart button is within. So it gets a little more complicated because you just have to make sure that you have the product ID that you're sending with the buy now button. And then obviously when people click buy now, most of the time um, you're probably gonna want to either direct them directly to the cart or to checkout. So that logic you'll kind of have to add yourself, but um, you could use one of these hooks basically saying this, you know, once you have that logic, saying I'm gonna put this after the add to cart button and then just put it in there. So you, the, the broad answer is yes. Um, it would take me too long to like show you how to do that right now, but yes, you can do that. Is there any, um, you know, like when you're searching for a plugin or for me at my level of user, when I'm looking in the plugin directory, I often find, oh, there's a number of plugins that do what I want to do. And then I have to kind of evaluate. And is there anything else other than WooCommerce or WordPress or there, what's, is, what's the competitor or is there not? Oh, for, for e-commerce? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, when I started, this was before with WordPress, this was before WooCommerce. Okay. Um, there was um, WP e-commerce, uh, which I used for a while. There was Cart66, which I used for a while. There was a bunch of other ones. I think they've kind of gone by the wayside when uh, Automatic, which is w WordPress's parent company, bought WooCommerce. That was a big 
deal because it's just way more tightly integrated. All that said, there's uh, a new one that I tried out on a couple sites called Big Commerce. And um, that's a little bit different because you manage all the products uh, on their site. And it's really just, uh, uh, it really just kind of syncs the products with your store and then leaves the kind of display and everything up to you. Whereas WooCommerce is more uh, all in one solution. So, and I think there's a few other players right now in the, in the e-commerce space. Um, I think all that said, uh, big commerce is cool. It's worth trying out, but you have to do a lot of the stuff yourself, which is kind of build out your product pages. Um, and WooCommerce has come a long way, especially after they were bought by Automatic. And I think it's really robust now. Uh, I know for a fact they have some, you know, major companies with stores running WooCommerce with, you know, 100,000 products or more. So, um, you know, it's it can scale. Um, I think probably the largest store that I've worked with it on had about 3000 products. So, um, you know, even that's quite a large amount of products and it, and it works for that. Uh, you know, obviously, like I mentioned, I work as a Shopify developer now. So that, you know, that's a big competitor now for, um, for WooCommerce, even though WordPress is, you know, over a third of all websites, I think Shopify is, I'm not, it has a big chunk of the other e-commerce sites, um, but that you don't have the advantages of WordPress. And, you know, that's the thing. People love WordPress. So uh, especially for a small store or like, um, you know, even just a mom and pop store or whatever, uh, WooCommerce is, is great. And I think that should be the first, the first thing you would go to. Well, Steve Stern just posted in the chat and that is a very good point. E-commerce is very hard. There's a lot for a store owner to manage. Um, they don't often think about that. Um, uh, and, you know, we had a few crises today at work and it was nothing that I did. Um, and this happens with WordPress and WooCommerce too. And uh, this is a, one of my sayings. The best way to break a site is to do absolutely nothing. It'll just break on its own. Um, so there's always a lot to maintain. You have to keep everything updated. Uh keep your, you know, it's just constant maintenance. So, you know, especially for your clients, um, I think that is a good point that it's hard and there's a lot for them to manage other than just entering their products. It's not a like set it and forget it kind of thing. You kind of have to always be on it. I would love to ask, um, I love to build Astra thing, you know, build an Astra. It's just such an, an easy theme to adapt to what people are looking for. And I'm starting to be asked for WooCommerce, but I haven't tried those two together. Have you done that or what are your thoughts? I'm not familiar with the Astra theme specifically. Um, so I can't really answer that directly, but I think most um, kind of popular or, you know, well-used themes uh, have WooCommerce support built in. Right. So, um, um, but then again, like this method should work with any theme. So it really doesn't matter. And that way you're not copying all the stuff into your theme, it's separate. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, you should be able to accomplish, you know, most anything that you were trying to do. Um, and in fact, kind of using this method if you're th you know like i mentioned if your theme has tons of woocommerce stuff built in it's almost like you're fighting against that uh, so you know it's kind of better if they've kind of left it untouched but just provide some basic uh, woocommerce support okay um having said that like for somebody building a store for the first time what do you wish you'd known when you first started building uh yeah, I wish I knew more about <laughs> hooks and filters because it would have made it a lot easier, um, uh, for sure. And uh, I think, you know, I went through the gamut with all those other e-commerce plugins and those were just not uh, as well coded or well laid out as, as WooCommerce. So I think WooCommerce is, is much easier to work with uh, and there's a lot you can do now just in the WordPress admin with the customizer. 
Um, and this is kind of just taking off from there. Like once you've kind of explored all your options um, going off from there, uh, what else do I wish I would have known? Um, I probably would have, because I stuck with some of those other plugins a lot longer than I should have. And uh, it took me a while to kind of fully make the jump to WooCommerce. So I probably would have jumped on that earlier. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Do the themes have to declare support for WooCommerce? Don't they? What, what yes, happens if you're using a theme that hasn't declared support? Does that break the hooks or is it kind of irrelevant? I'm never quite sure what that does. Yeah, um, you know what? I haven't specifically tried that because um, I have my theme here. Let me see here. Uh, there is a place for that. Yeah, it's really just a single call, which is, I'll put this in the chat. Um, that's really all you need to add. Um, but if you don't have that, I think you do get a, like a warning in the ad admin. But um, the other thing that needs to be said is that even if you add this, that doesn't kind of do it. You still have to, um, there's, uh, you might have to add your own stuff to the loops if you're creating your own product loops and not using their templates. All that said, using this method I just showed, you could probably do that. I think you only need that single line and then you won't. Um, yes, this is, that's great, that link. Um, and I have another one here too that I'll post. And this, actually the one that Steve posted may be more up to date. Uh, I haven't looked at this link in a long time. It may not work. Um, but yeah, that's a very good question. All right, anything else? You seem to have managed a lot of stores. What mistakes do you see store managers, whether it's you know the way that something's designed or just what the, the owner hasn't thought through in their process? Uh, I think the one of the major things I run into is people trying to do too much at once or um, for example trying to add a ton of stuff to like check out and oh, I want to add this roundup widget and I want to add this thing and that thing and um, you know especially trying I just think trying to do too much um, can at once can be a problem so um, I generally try to recommend like adding a feature at a time because it's much easier to test and much easier to get working. And once you know that's working properly, then add something else. So, um, and the other thing that clients often don't understand how long some of these things take to do and to make sure that they're working properly. Uh, so, you kind of have to damp down their expectations a little bit because of course they always want it yesterday and it has to work perfectly. And, you know, on our end as developers, there's a lot of testing that has to go on. It has to look good on all the devices. It has to work everywhere. Um, so I think those are the two main uh, pain points is uh, store managers or owners trying to do too much and also um, managing their expectations. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. If, if you had a like a full choice, would you work on Shopify or you'd work on WooCommerce? Do you have a... Uh, if it was my choice, yeah. I'd work on WooCommerce. Yeah. However, there's some, uh, you know, when you get into like actual retail businesses who have like fulfillment centers, um, there are businesses doing that with WooCommerce, but I don't think there's quite as many turnkey solutions that the, as there are for Shopify. Um, so, for example, if you have multiple warehouses and you need all your inventory synced and that has to sync with your back end, uh, you can definitely do that with WooCommerce, but uh, I think that's just a little more work on the development side, whereas um, there are multiple kind of app vendors that have provided those solutions with Shopify. So, um, uh, and, uh, you know, all that said, again, 
there's very large stores running WooCommerce. So I, I would say I wouldn't, you know, make that make you think that that's not an option because it is, uh, and it yeah. can be done. Got it. Great. 